Where'd you hide them? Who's got the rumors? I need them. I gotta make money. I gotta feed my 14 kids. All right. Ugh. I'm gonna get mad if we don't start talking about this iPhone 13 stuff soon because <laughs> we don't talk about it. It's not gonna come out. Hey guys, what's up? Sam here. Welcome back to another video. And today we are talking about iPhone 13, iPhone SE 3, future Apple events. A lot, a lot of good stuff. Just like the new episode of Genius Bar that dropped. Listen, these are getting better by the week. I said it on the podcast. I like the podcast more than YouTube. Sorry, guys. It's just me and John Prosser hanging out for like an hour to an hour and a half every week. And honestly, it is, uh, it's a much needed boy time, you know, <laughs> just me and the guys. So if you want to listen to that, link is down below. Genius Bar out now everywhere. Wait, I just checked. Are you not subscribed? the channel yet, go down below, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that bell for all notifications so that you never miss a beat on the latest Apple news. Opening the show today, I want to spin the wheel to see what topic comes up first. We got iPhone SE 3, iPhone 13, or Apple's big changes for events. What is it going to be? Put your hands together for Apple's change in events. Okay, so this is something that Mark Gurman, who's about 90% accurate, had this like interesting write-up about in the past week. So in this larger piece about Apple's VR strategy and like the headset thing that's coming out in a few months. Like actually, unironically, the Apple VR headset, German says, is just a couple of months away, which is, I mean, kind of insane. This thing has been in development for a really long time. It's going to be lightweight, have 12 plus cameras, dual 8K, and yes, I do mean 8K, not 4K, not 2K, not 1080p, to 8K displays, and it could be yours for the cost of $3,000. Bring it downtown, oh, up top. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, none of you guys are gonna buy it because you're all freaking poor. So like the fact that the headset is coming in just a couple months is kind of a big deal. But the real story here was how Apple has viewed sort of their, their past year of events during the pandemic. We obviously saw the biggest change for Apple's event strategy uh, of all time when the pandemic hit, like WWDC, which was thousands and thousands of people rushing into the same spot suddenly became virtual. Instead of holding one event in the fall or maybe two at the very most, we saw one in September, one in October, and one in November, you probably like yourself or heard somebody else say, wow, the Apple events look so good. The drone shots are great. And I love the way that it's just so streamlined and there's not a whole lot of fluff. Yeah? Well, Apple hates it. I think it's the amount of effort that goes into pre-production, the actual show, post-production, the drone shots, the cruise. It's a lot. And while it was a great vessel during the pandemic, guess who doesn't get to come on Apple's campus during these events and during this time? the media, the press. I'm talking about the big shooters on the court. Marquez Brownlee, The Verge, TechCrunch, uh, Austin Evans, you know, all the all the people that are like, go into the Apple events because they get to go hands-on early. And it turns out that does a lot. It's a big event, literally, as far as people coming in and creating a hype. It's also an Apple's controlled environment. It's not them sending the products to reviewers where reviewers can kind of do whatever. If they have issues, it's like, yeah, you can make a phone call or send an email, but there's not an Apple engineer on site. The lighting might be different. The quality of the production is going to be different because it's in somebody's studio rather than Apple's on-demand little hub. And Apple really likes that. So these VR glasses are not only coming in a few months, they're coming at an in-person event in a couple of months. Now, WWDC is obviously coming up, so it's very possible that these will and could be showed at this event. Nobody said that explicitly, but I'm just putting together the pieces here. So you know, I wouldn't be shocked considering German's track record and the fact that Apple is like, okay, we've had our fun. Now let's get some cringy jokes and some Air Force One and some fan service back in these. Hello and welcome back to, I mean, honestly, I like the events. They're fun, but the digital events, I mean, they're, they're pretty well put together. And uh, I mean, speaking of things put together, not all that well. I mean, listen, we're talking about the iPhone 13 and the notch, but uh, I mean, Mac, it's car, I love you guys, but could you give this maybe not to a four-year-old? Like, I don't know who's doing these mock-ups. I don't know who allowed this. I mean, listen, I'm not saying you need the perfect polished, like production ready dummy unit for the iPhone to show off, but like maybe this like hard plastic with the iOS 11 wallpaper, maybe we could do a little bit better. Nonetheless, Mac, it's car, who is around 60% accurate is back today with some information about the iPhone 13. And it's actually really, really good news. Like as much as I've like, 
to Makatakara. They actually have great info and they were like dead on with the iPhone 12. So what Makatakara is showing us here is what they say is an iPhone 13 Pro mock-up that they found on Alibaba. So, I mean, obviously take some of this with a grain of salt, but again, like the thing that looked like this for the iPhone 12 from them last year was dead on. In fact, pretty much every detail for the iPhone 13 Pro here is the same as the 12 Pro. The boxiness, the width and depth and height of the actual phone, and of course the camera setup. The camera setup is remaining the same. What's changing is on the front with a completely redesigned look at the notch here. Now, obviously we have been talking about the notch and this design and what it could look like forever. And I know you guys are sitting there going, I swear to God, if this guy, if this dude talks about the notch one more time. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and click on that unsubscribe button right now. And of course, press that dislike as well to let me know that you absolutely hate me. But this time for real, I, I like genuinely believe that the notch is going to be fixed. You can see the updated design basically squishes everything together and moves the speaker up to the bezel, which is not only really smart, but I think it looks phenomenal. My fundamental issue with the notch has not been, oh, it's problematic in its current state. It's just like compared to every everybody else that's coming out with smartphones, they've come up with a better solution than this chunky black bar on the top of your screen. So what Apple is doing here is just making it a bit smaller, shifting the speaker up, and giving us something that actually looks, I don't know, dare I say, somewhat futuristic? Like, I don't think that this is as good as it could be. I think we're all looking for that 2023 no-notch iPhone that my friend Renders by Ian dreamed up. I mean, yeah, this is like based on rumors. This is what it's going to look like, but that's not coming for a couple years. Every credible source is saying that the notch is going to get smaller where it was a bit mixed in the past. And we've seen a couple designs floating around. One is this one, which is just the same width, but a bit shorter. And the second, my favorite one is actually what leaked from Makatakara and the most recent things we've been hearing, which is just squishing everything together and moving the speaker up to the bezel. Now for the feature story today, iPhone SE 3, there has been a lot of talk about when this device is coming. Like for a lot of you, you know, if you're like me as well, I was like, oh, there's gonna be a new one this year because like we got the new iPhone SE for the first time in years in 20. 20, and I thought because of its success, Apple would just send it forward, you know, and every year we'd get one, but that is not the case. We got some really revealing info from display analyst Ross Young, who is actually 100% accurate. The dude was like the only guy consistently saying that 120 hertz was not happening on the iPhone 12 and would only happen this year in 2021, and now has some projections about the iPhone SE 3 and the iPhone SE 4 that's coming out in 2023. So here's what we're hearing for 2022, a 4.7 inch LCD display and 5G. There you go. That's the iPhone SE 3. Go ahead and go out to the store and buy it. It's out now. It's great. Oh, you don't get it either? No, neither do I. So wait, after two years of the iPhone SE 2020 being out, you're telling me Apple is keeping the exact same design, 4.7 inches, and just adding 5G and then like a faster processor? That means it would just be the iPhone 8, which is the iPhone SE, which is the iPhone SE 3. Like, I fail to understand how anyone would be interested in this phone. I think if that phone came out in 2021, sure. The 4.7 inch screen with the bezels and the home button and just 5G and a faster processor, it doesn't seem like enough for 2022. But in 2023, that's when the crazy train comes through because it says, oh, you think the iPhone 8 and the iPhone SE and the iPhone SE 3 all look the same? Okay, why don't we just make it a super premium design? Now I'm also skeptical about this, but Ross Young says that the iPhone SE 4 coming in 2023 will have a 6.1 inch redesign, so it'll be the size of something like an iPhone 11 or iPhone 10R. But instead of a notch, it's gonna have a hole punch design. So the primary iPhones, the flagships, are getting hole punch in 2022. And then in 2023, like six months later, that's when we're getting the hole punch, like pretty upgraded design for the iPhone SE. What? If Ross Young's track record was not this good, I would not be talking about this at all. But like the dude has nailed details in the past and has like a really good network of display analysts. That's why like most of these details are about the screen rather than the final design or other features like a faster processor. I mean, I'm all for Apple making things more affordable, but like a hole punch design sounds pretty premium. And Apple's bringing that to the lowest cost iPhone in 2023. Man, if that's happening, then the 20, oh, the 2023 iPhone is supposed to go completely notchless, completely hole punchless, 
full screen. So maybe this does make sense. All I know is that for a few years, I've sort of been of the opinion that the iPhone has hit its golden age and that like, it's just kind of gonna go down from here, like popularity wise, everybody has one, it's peaked, but there's some pretty major upgrades happening design wise over the course of the next few years, not just for Apple's iPhone 13 and beyond lineup, but also for the lowest end model, the iPhone SE and all of this broadly really good news. You're gonna get an insanely good phone for a couple hundred bucks if you just wait till 2023. So wait till 2023 and don't pay attention to buy the iPhone SE until then, okay? All right, I'm sweating my <clears throat> off here um, and I'm too hot to keep going with this video. So it's gonna end now. All right, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like down below, hit subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I've been Sam, I'm doing well and I'll see you in my next video.